Hello everyone. After having just finished Mind Path to Ptolemus, I wanted to come back and do a review about it. So this is a first person puzzle game from Carlos Coronado, and in it you play as a grieving father in a coma. The basic setup for the game is that you are on a storm chase, and you brought along your young daughter, Sophia, and while chasing the storm, the bad weather came to you, rather violently. And you were searching for your daughter to try to bring her to safety, and you ended up getting hurt very badly yourself, and ended up in a coma. And that's where the entire game basically takes place, inside of your own mind, while you're in a coma. And you're searching around your own mind, looking for... for understanding, looking for forgiveness, and basically trying to claw your way back to consciousness, back to life. Hence where the title of the game comes from, Mind Path to Ptolemus. The uh, Ptolemus is actually a part of the brain that regulates consciousness. And along the way, in this journey of your mind, you solve puzzles. Now the most immediately obvious thing about this game, and without a doubt my favorite thing, is the environmental design. It is simply a beautiful, breathtaking game. I don't think words can do it justice, but hopefully the visuals do. It is seriously one of the best looking games I have ever seen in my entire life. It is wonderful, not just in terms of fidelity, which it is very a very high fidelity game, but also just in terms of the design. Just the design itself is so huge and colorful, expansive, and just breathtaking. It really is immensely gorgeous. So now let's talk about the puzzle design. So let me demonstrate here how the puzzles work. So it involves a kind of gradual increase of difficulty as puzzle games tend to go. It starts with just a few elements and then builds upon that with more and more. Most of what you do involves these orbs here. I call them brain balls because they look kind of like synapses or something like that. And with these balls you can do various things. So look at this thing here. This is a like a sand pit of gears. And what this thing does is, when activated, it will actually basically turn back time to an earlier to an earlier time. And this has a couple effects. One is simply visual. It uh, just changes the season, as you can see. Everything turns all nice and orange. Very, very beautiful. And if you get off it, it turns back to green, slowly. But the more functional part of it, when it comes to the puzzles, is that by turning back time, you actually are turning back the wear and tear that destroyed parts of the environment. So if you look here, there's this uh, destroyed walkway up here. And if you turn back time, it reforms. So you can now walk on it. So this is one of the types of things that you can activate. This one reforms pillars and stuff like that. And it can be activated one of two ways. Either you can stand in it, as you just saw, or you can have one of these things stand in it in your place. So that way you don't have to be inside of it, you can have it just permanently activated. So either one will do it. So oftentimes you'll have many of those balls, and you'll have many of these different things to activate, so... Uh, that's the gear one there. Let's move on to a different... A different type of activatable thing. There's one up here that actually turns it to nighttime. Which, of course, as you'd expect, has the visual change of turning it to nighttime, but also has a functional thing for the puzzles. So here's another ball here. Come here. Come here. There we go. Alright, so this down here is a pit of... or a, a pit. <laughs> a bed of flowers. And if you activate these, it turns to nighttime. Which is incredibly beautiful, of course as everything in this game is. Very, very pretty. Look at the stars. Ah. But, of course, it has a functional effect for the puzzles. So if we permanently activate this here, just throw that down there, it'll reach there eventually. What that does do is it allows you to go through portals. So it has to be nighttime for portals to work. Step through that. And now I'm here. So most of what you do involves these balls. There's a couple other things, like there's mirrors that will uh, like shoot out light 
hit various things, and there's a couple other things, but that's mostly it. And there's many more types of these pits, too. There's ones that make it rain. And there's some other stuff. So that's most of what you're going to be doing. And they get gradually more complex as you go on. So you're going to have to make lots of decisions, like... What's the exact order of events I need to get something? Like, for example, you might find that one of the balls you need is maybe up there. So you're thinking, okay, how do I get up there? Okay, there's a portal up there, so I need it to be nighttime to get to the portal. So you throw a ball down there. Now it's nighttime, now the portal's activated, but like, oh wait, where's the end to the where's the other end to the portal? Go through this one. Find Oh wait, this didn't take me to the right one. So then you go back through it and go, okay, so what portal does connect to that? Look around, oh, there's portals up there. How do I get to those portals? They're off the ground. Oh my god, look at those light rays. Beautiful. But anyway, uh, back on my train of thought. So that's that's kind of how the decisions typically go. Kind of step by step looking at, oh, I need that thing or I need that thing. What do I need to do? And you kind of just go work backwards from that, trying to figure out exactly where the balls need to be or where you need to stand and, and stuff like that. And I would describe the puzzles as generally pretty good. I, I think they're solid, although I don't think they're amazing. And they I don't think they're nearly as strong as the environmental designs, which are just gorgeous. But they're pretty good. They're mostly satisfying, and for the most part, they make sense. And I never really felt the need to look at a walkthrough or anything like that. So I would describe them as good, but not exceptional. Now, there are some things about the puzzles that I didn't really think worked all that well. And one of them is that they didn't feel very well integrated with the story. I mean, it would seem like all of the puzzles are directly related to the story, because after all, the environments that you're walking through and the puzzles that you're solving are all a product, are, are supposed to be a product of your mind. And that is, of course, what the story is all about. It's about your mind and your journey through it. And, you know, you're picking up, like, this sort of a ball that obviously is made of, like, brain matter. So everything kind of has a veneer of having to do with the story, but... In practice, I found that it didn't really feel like it. Even though it seems like it should be, it never really felt like the stuff I'm doing was really all that directly related to the story. Most of it just felt like pure puzzle solving, and it didn't feel like it had anything to do with the story at all. I mean, most of the time when, when dealing with a puzzle, I would go into puzzle mode and try to solve it, and I would just completely forget about the story altogether. And when a bit of dialogue would pop up talking about the story, to me it was like, oh, oh right, I'm doing this for a reason. Like, it surprised me. It's like, oh, yeah, there is a story. That's right. I just kind of kept forgetting about it when I went into puzzle mode to solve the puzzles. Because even though they have the veneer of being related to the story, with all of the kind of allegorical and or metaphorical things that you deal with, but it never really felt all that much like it really was connected. I mean, the story is about guilt and trying to get conscious, uh, trying to fight for consciousness again and things like that, but in reality, most of what you're actually doing, most of your actions are just like tossing balls around and walking through portals. Like, it doesn't feel connected to the story, really. Not really. I mean, only in the most vague sense of... Uh, of the sense of these puzzles are kind of difficult and so maybe that difficulty is supposed to kind of mimic his difficulty in in the stuff that he's working through in his own mind. So in that way, there's some sort of a vague connection. And again, the visuals are also connected to the story, but the actual actions that you're doing don't really feel like it for the most part. So I kind of kept forgetting that there even really was a story, and by the end of it, I never really felt all that engaged by it. I didn't feel emotionally engaged by the story all that much. There were some moments that did feel, uh, where I did feel engaged in the story a little bit. You know, there was some emotional resonance, but for the most part, not really. Which I think is a bit of a shame. Because it does actually have an interesting story. You know, I, I like stories about about self-discovery. And thing uh, games that take place kind of in your mind, not in the real world. I think it's interesting. But, yeah, I just never felt all that engaged by the story, really. Because most of the actions you do again, are just not really directly connected. Another thing I want to mention about the puzzles 
is that they actually quite often feel a bit tedious. And it's not because they're extremely difficult to solve. They're really not. They're, they're moderately difficult. Again, I never felt the need for a walkthrough. Uh, it's just the fact that you often have to run very far distances back and forth just to figure out what actually changed in the world when you did something. So, for example, looking up here at uh, all of these pillars, you can see they're all fully formed, right? I can walk on them. So then, if I think, wait a minute, I wonder if I take away the thing from the, the gear patch, where it restores these pillars and stuff, if I take that away, is it going to also take away those pillars up there that I just saw back there? So you have that question, and then you take this ball out, toss it to the side, and it really can be quite tedious to run back and forth to check whether something actually happened, because when when these pillars appear and disappear, there's no sound that happens. You can't hear anything. And the actual visual change is quite subtle and slow, and often you have to walk very far, so now I come back, oh, okay, it did. But it took me, like, a full minute just to figure that out. And that's only one part of the puzzle, so when, when you're going through, like, the, the problem-solving phase of the puzzle, when you're just trying to map out your environment and, like, how things react to your actions, it can be quite tedious to run back and forth, tossing these balls every which way to figure out exactly what's happening. And how annoying this is, is certainly negated quite a bit by how beautiful the environments are. Because the, the environments are so ridiculously beautiful that it really, it's such a joy just to be in this world. And I think that keeps it from being too tedious. Like, I, I certainly never thought about quitting or anything of the sort. So that definitely negates it, the beauty of the environment. But it can get quite tedious, running back and forth and back and forth, trying to figure out exactly what changed. Another thing about the puzzles that I want to mention is that I feel like some of the concepts you're supposed to understand to be able to solve them are not all that well explained or sometimes just a bit muddled. So for example, you have these gears here that when you stand in them or activate them in some way, they cause the pillar to reform. The thing is though, there's also another pit, another bunch of these gears, over here. So there's two of them. And you might wonder, what's the difference? And that's what I wondered when I first saw them. I was thinking maybe one restores pillars in one area and the other restores the pillars in a different area. That's what I was thinking, but it turns out that's not actually the case. It turns out they're exactly the same. They both do exactly the same thing. But to actually figure that out, to actually realize that they both do the same thing, is actually quite difficult. Because of what I mentioned before, how it's, how it's tedious to go back and forth, to figure out exactly what's changed. So if I want to know, like, both of these, I can see quite easily, will cause this beam to be restored. That's easy enough, but what about the beam all the way over there? I'm going to have to run back and forth and back and forth to figure that out. And even then, what about, like, the beams over there, where all the other portals were, up in those stands? Like, I'm going to have to try to remember exactly how everything looked before, and then after, and then compare it, like, two times for each one? I guess four times for each one? You know, see how it looks when it's off here, and then when it's on here, and then when it's off over there, and then when it's on over there? Like, it takes a long time, and it's hard to see exactly what's changed. Especially because of, of the lack of feedback. Especially for this gear type thing, where there's just no sound when stuff changes, and it's a very subtle, gradual kind of look. So there's not all that much feedback for when that changes. And it can be hard to tell what's actually going on, and so that kind of leads to... It led to me being a little bit confused, because I wasn't sure what my options were in terms of solving the puzzle, because I still wasn't completely sure that these two gear things didn't do something different. Which led me to be a little bit confused. And then later on I realized... You know, later on, after I solved the puzzle, basically, I realized why this pit is here. But I don't understand why the pit... Why well, there's also a pit here. Like, it's just a bit weird that there's two of them, and it's... Uh, I don't think it's actually necessary. It's just a bit... strange. And a little bit confusing. And there was another case, too, where the game didn't actually communicate to me a certain concept. 
And this concept wasn't actually required to solve the puzzles, it was simply something that helped me solve the puzzles. So not knowing it didn't completely ruin my ability to solve them. And I never needed to use a walkthrough. But what it did mean is that I had to run back and forth even more to figure out exactly what was going on. So not a huge deal, but a little bit frustrating. Alright, so that's pretty much all I have to say about the puzzles. Let's talk about some other random stuff. So another thing that bothered me a bit is the invisible walls that are actually very, very frequent. There's quite a few areas where you can walk into the distance and there's absolutely nothing in your way that you can see and then you suddenly just smash your face into an invisible wall. It's very frustrating, especially for a game of this type that has incredibly beautiful environments to the point where it's easy to just be swept away in them and just want to start walking into the distance just to see more of it. And I did that quite a few times, and most of the time I was met with an invisible wall. So that took me out of the experience quite a bit. Also, the audio mixing, which is probably kind of a weird thing to mention. I guess most people wouldn't mention it, but the audio mixing is actually not all that great. Particularly, there's quite a few times when it's raining, and the rain is extremely loud. And yet, even though the rain is extremely loud, the voiceover volume, for the most part, is very quiet. To the point where I can kind of barely hear it. So the rain is super loud, but the voiceover volume is super low at the same time. It's pretty wonky, and unfortunately you can't fix that yourself because there are no separate volume sliders in the options for the audio. In fact, there's no audio settings whatsoever in the game, in the game's menu. There's, there's none. No volume sliders, nothing. Just subtitles on and off and that's it. Also, on the subject of audio, I feel like the voice acting is really just not great. It's not bad, don't get me wrong, it's not bad. But it's not great either, and I don't feel like it lives up to the quality that you see in the environmental design. Here, I'll play a bit of the voice acting so you can hear for yourself. But, I can't really blame the tornado, can I? What can you expect from a force of nature? I was the one who chased it. My obsession. I deserved to be in that bed, neither dead nor alive. I had screwed with destiny, and it screwed me right back. Fair deal. It was also reassuring to know that I couldn't harm anybody else, as long as I was in a coma. That was the type of nonsense I had to tell myself to keep me on the path. On the other hand, though, the music is actually really, really good. Here, have a listen. In the end, this is an incredibly beautiful game, with great music, and some decent puzzles. It doesn't feel quite as cohesive as it should, and most of it doesn't feel like it really lives up to the quality of the environmental designs, which are just exceptional. But it really is incredibly beautiful, and I enjoyed my time with it a hell of a lot. This has been Mind Path to Ptolemus. It's available on Steam, and I'll have a link in the description to where you can check it out for yourself. Thank you for watching.